Hello and welcome to the Autodesk Design Academy. In this seventh module, we will be discussing principles of model meshing for simulation. Specifically, we will talk about types of elements and the advantages and disadvantages of each, when it's appropriate to use local mesh refinement, and proper stress resolution, that is, ensuring that the mesh density is sufficient to produce accurate stress results. This process is also referred to as mesh convergence. Solid meshes are often comprised of only tetrahedral elements, with four triangular sides and four nodes each. This is the element type generated by the majority of CAD applications with built-in simulation capabilities. Advantages of this mesh type are that tetrahedral elements are the easiest to generate, and they easily conform to the shape of small and complex geometry. The disadvantage of tet meshes is that they tend to exaggerate the stiffness of the structure. Therefore, a finer mesh is required relative to brick meshes to accurately capture the results. The default solid mesh type in Autodesk Simulation Mechanical is hex dominant, meaning that the majority of the volume is filled with six sided, eight node elements, with the highest quality elements placed at and near the surface where the stresses are the most critical. Additionally, wedges, pyramids, and tetrahedra are used to fill in the remaining volume at the interior of the parts. Hex dominant meshing is a more difficult and complex process, but the elements produce better results without having to be as fine as an all tetrahedral mesh would need to be. This model is a variation of the yoke we've seen in prior modules. A small intersecting hole has been added through the wall of the larger hole. The model has been given an initial solid mesh using an absolute mesh size of 1 8 of an inch. The hole at the small end of the yoke is fixed, and a 1,000 pound bearing load acting in the minus x direction has been added to the large hole. The material is ASTM A36 steel. An initial analysis produces a maximum von Mises stress of 18.2 KSI at the edge of the small intersecting hole. Looking at the safety factor results, we see that the minimum safety factor is slightly less than 2, which appears to be adequate. However, the initial mesh likely is not fine enough to accurately capture the localized stress concentration results. Corners, grooves, and holes cause a localized stress concentration effect, which typically requires a high density of small elements to capture accurately. In most structural FEA analyses, the displacement results are not particularly sensitive to mesh density, and even a fairly coarse mesh will produce good displacement results. However, if you were to compare stress results, the calculated stresses increase as the mesh size is decreased. Eventually, when the mesh is fine enough, the stress level plateaus, and further mesh size reductions no longer produce a significant effect on the outcome. In other words, mesh convergence is achieved. You could decrease the global mesh size. However, this stress resolution method is inefficient and can be problematic for large or complex assemblies. The increase in the number of elements, the size of the model and results files, and the solution time can be very significant. It is more efficient to locally refine the mesh size only in the critical regions. Using the circle select mode, we will select the vertices on the faces of the two small holes. Next, we will add refinement points at the selected vertices. The dialog reports that the average mesh size without refinement is slightly less than 0.1 inch. Let's define a 0.1 inch radius. This input controls the size of a spherical zone around each refinement point, within which the local mesh size override is enforced. Outside of this local refinement zone, the mesher gradually transitions the element size from the local to the global size. Next, we'll specify a local mesh size of 0.04 inches and click OK. The black dots represent the refinement points and the translucent orange spheres indicate the size of the refinement zone around each point. We need to regenerate the mesh for the refinement points to take effect. We can hide the refinement spheres so that the local mesh is easier to see. The refinement points indicate where the nodes used to be located prior to refining the mesh. Clearly, the new local mesh is about twice as dense with elements as the unrefined one was. Now we'll rerun the analysis.
The maximum von Mises stress is now about 23.8 KSI, a 30% increase relative to the original mesh. But is the mesh fine enough for the results to be trustworthy? To find out, let's refine the mesh further and perform another comparison. We can revise the previously defined refinement points by right-clicking the refinement point heading in the browser and choosing Edit from the context menu. Let's reduce the local mesh size to 0.03, regenerate the mesh, and rerun the simulation. Now the maximum von Mises stress is just under 25.1 KSI, or about another 6% increase. This increase is much less significant than the increase produced by the first refinement, so we can be fairly confident that we're closing in on mesh convergence and our calculated stresses are close to the true values. We should look at the safety factor results one more time. Note that the minimum safety factor is now less than 1.5. If this safety factor is not sufficient, then the capacity of the part should be derated or the design revised to decrease the stresses. A larger hole diameter would tend to decrease the stress concentration effect. However, this change would also decrease the cross-sectional area of the yoke through which the load is transmitted, negating the benefit of the reduced concentration factor. A better solution would be to relocate the small intersecting hole to a lower stress region of the large hole, for example, aligning it along the x-axis. Of course, to ensure that our results are fully converged, we could perform additional iterations, further decreasing the local mesh size until the change in stress between iterations is insignificant. You may wish to do that on your own. This graph shows the mesh convergence of our yoke model for a five iteration study. The iterations are based on the original global mesh size and locally refined mesh sizes of 0.04, 0.03, 0 0.02, and 0 0.015 inches respectively. The variation in the maximum von Mises stress magnitude between the last two iterations is less than 1%. From this we can conclude that 26 KSI is a very reliable calculation of the stress level at the edges of the small intersecting hole. Summarizing, in our discussion of the principles of model meshing we've covered different solid element types and their advantages and disadvantages, reasons for using local mesh refinement, how the mesh density affects the stress results, and how you can achieve proper stress resolution ensuring the accuracy of your results. This video demonstrated the process of adding local mesh refinement and running multiple analyses with decreasing local element sizes to determine the effect on the resultant stresses. Remember to use these techniques to ensure the validity of your simulation results, particularly when dealing with critical components or marginal safety factors. Thank you for watching.